Yo, yo. Oh, hey, cool bag there. What do you got in there? Like oh. your body armor and your, your weapons and whatnot? Oh, no, uh, uh, I keep my battle gnome in there. Battle gnome? Yeah, so for instance, like if I feel afraid or anything, and I'm like, oh no. Deploy battle gnome! That's awesome, but how do you turn it off? I haven't really figured that out. This may be a while, you wanna get some coffee? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Mm. Well, hello there. Bet you're wondering why I wasn't surprised. As many of you know, my personal EDC travels. But I no longer worry with my Simply Safe home security system. Come on, let me show you around. The sensors are sleek and easy to install. Sleek means cool, it protects every window, room, and door. Using the system is easy with touchpads, keychains, and even panic buttons. When you have to retreat to your safe room, Help is only a button push away. Just order online or by phone. It's shipped right to your door. Setup is a breeze. 24-7 professional monitoring. Ditch those old systems. No contracts. 50 cents a day. Wait, 50 cents a day? What are you waiting for? Give your family the peace of mind they deserve. Buy Simply Safe today. All right, hey guys, we are out on the range. Paul and I are about to burn it down and have some fun, but I wanted to talk about how to make the most of your range time. Uh, when I'm teaching classes, it's common for me to go around the circle and be like, hey, how often do you get to the range? And I'll just go around asking all kinds of different people. And what I get from the just warrior poet community out there who is into guns and who is training, they usually only get to the range about once a month. And then when pressed, how long are you shooting on the range? Typically it's something like two hours. So as I'm being realistic rather than idyllic, I'm like, all right, you guys are not making out to the range as much as instructor John would like, and you're not training as long. So what I want is the best punch. I want the best value for your time out there. Be smart about how you train so that you can really make those training times count. And hopefully by making it easier, uh, a com more compressed amount of time where you get a lot more out of that time, you'll get to the range more. And you also don't burn through quite as much ammo because you're more purpose driven. In this video, Paul and I wanted to really cover down on four things that would really help you make the best of your range time. Uh, one of them is having a plan when you hit the range and Paul's gonna tackle that. I'll deal more with equipment. So here's my lovely truck the internet hates. And very first off, I would encourage you guys to make sure you have your equipment organized. Here I've got uh, all my range stuff here and then extra kit in this big bag here. So I wanna talk about that stuff. Before I jump into the equipment though, let me go on a tiny rant about dry fire. The very first thing to make your time count on the range is make sure you're doing your dry fire off the range if you can. Some of the dry fire just draws in the safe area of your house or target transitions. Anything like that that you can practice before the range will allow you to already be kind of fresh, hit it on the range, and you don't have to spend a bunch of time doing that on the range. So number one, dry fire in advance if you're able to. Second thing is make sure you're loading your magazines in advance. Some of you guys, let's say you were awesome helping us out. You downloaded the WPSN app, Warrior Post Society Network app from the App Store, and you were watching some of our wonderful, glorious shows, or maybe one of our training classes. While you're doing that, you should be stacking mags. This is uh, the uh, range bag that we sell on our website. I love it because you got all these cubby holes and you'll notice right here, I've just got magazines galore all stacked in here and they're all loaded up so that I don't have to spend any of my valuable range time loading magazines. I get here, I shoot all my mags, whether it's rifle or pistol, and I got a ton of mags already ready to go. Here's some more rifle overage. So as I open up this piece, you just see mags galore, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. I got 14 mags ready to go in addition to this other stuff. So when I'm going to the range, I'm not wasting any time stacking mags. So step two, the first was dry fire. The second one is preloaded mag. So while you're chilling watching WPSN, stack mags casually. It'll be great uh, fun. Since I already pulled this out, I can show you just a little bit more of how I organize. Here's my range kit. And I've got my ears, my shot timer, uh, sunscreen, oil, staples and tools, all kinds of goodies. 
The third piece, dry fire, load mags in advance, the third piece is make sure all your equipment is organized in one place so you don't forget anything and you're able to go. This is a bag that's always stay use ready. When I'm done training at the range, one of the very first things I do at the next business day is I prep all my range gear and so that the next time I go out, it's not a big hassle. Uh, I make it easy for me to go uh, and get to the range. Uh, next thing is this big bag and this thing is glorious. I wanted to show it off. And this is my range duffel bag. It's shiny and new and I'm very proud. So love this bag and it allows me to have all my stuff in one place. So here's my uh, body armor ready to go. Uh, helmet, night vision, knee pads, my war belt. And then under here, this is so cool, you're gonna love this. Guns. So you got a special gun storage place. This is an IWI Galil. I have not even shot it yet, so looking forward to that. Some other ARs here that latch in. My DD Mark 18. Anyway, lots of good stuff. If you're interested in getting any of this stuff, it's on our website. On our website is just a honeypot of the curated good stuff. So when I find a solution I really like, I throw it on our website so you get the right thing and it really helps us out a lot as we're engaging in the cultural fight for First and Second Amendment and freedom in general. And that means we gotta finance it. So buy from us when you can, but a uh, soft push there, guys. All right, so without further ado, let's go to Paul. And let's see Paul's organization. And it's a disaster. Look at this. All right, so you can see Paul is not prepared at all. He's just got all of his crap thrown around. So I just did the thing on the organize. And you sure, so, so I noticed you got the really cool bag. I got the bag. Um, you got, got all your stuff organized, ready to go. Yeah. I, I just didn't see you pull out the training plan. Maybe it was in one of those pockets somewhere. Is it no, no, printed, no printed drills, nothing, no, no plan that you're coming with? I, um, well, I brought you. I brought you. That's, that's that was good. my plan. <laughs> lucky, lucky you remember to bring me. My range training plan was to bring you. All awesome. right, what are we doing? Uh, teach the folks on range training plan. Sure. So, uh, so planning when you get to the range is important. All right, have something already pre-established that you're going to do when you get there. Have some objectives, some criteria that you want to uh, that you want to cover, and some uh, some goals that you want to meet. Uh, the thing about going to the range is it involves a lot of logistics, right? For most yeah. of us, not all of us get to walk out our back porch and stop shooting. You got to prep your gear like we talked about. You've got to make sure you do your dry fire before you get out there. You got to load up the car. You got to drive there. You got to set up the range. Then you actually have to do what you came there to do. You got to do your shooting. Then you got to tear down, clean up, pack the truck back up, go back to the, go back to the house and clean your guns, right? So this is a lot that goes into a training day. So in order to maximize our efficiency and our productivity, part of that, besides having our equipment prepped and getting your dry fire done ahead of time is we have a training plan right Got we it. know what kind of goals that we're going to cover and uh, and how we're going to cover them yeah. so the way the way we like to break our our drills down when we come out and set up our training plan is we're either working skills stress or it's a maintenance day or a combination of those three kind of depending on where you are as a shooter and what your context is as a shooter if you're still working basic skills like your drawn presentation your reload maybe those are things that you need to work in their component parts without adding any additional stress or any uh, varying conditions that's going to make it more difficult for you so if you're not solid if you don't have a good uh, functional skill set when it comes to those basic skills yet those are things that you're going to work on when we come out we tend to do a combination of things like today for example we came out uh, we had a new red dot on a uh, one of our war poets that we need to zero right so that was a maintenance phase right there it's a it's a break-in period for the gun it's making sure that the optic is zeroed and then we ran a cold standards drill okay ran a the fast, fast drill, drill. Oh. fundamentals accuracy speed test all yep. right it's a uh, it's a soul crusher for those of you guys that have that have run this thing it can crush your soul sometimes but that basically gave us a static drill to work several skills right uh, it involves all of your basic skills fundamentals reloads recoil management in a static setting and we run it cold because really that cold run is all that matters all right it's where your skills are when you first walk out on the range not where you end up at the end of a good training day. Good. we know we know what that's like it's right good. yep where you come out and man you you just Man, after getting after running that drill twelve times, 
then you're looking at these smoking times, your great splits, your great reloads. And uh, guess what though? That's not where your skills were at the beginning of the day. And that's really yeah. all that counts, especially in a real world context, right? That's right. It's where your skills are cold. So we like to run a cold drill. Another important thing is keep track of your progress, right? Kind of write down where those cold times are. Look at where you're at uh, after you get some warm up time in. And then once you once you record those things, then you can start working on kind of what your what your primary training plan was. Once you set kind of a cold standard, you look at that, you record it, and then you go into your regular training plan, which for us is going to involve yep. some more dynamic drills today. Uh, we're going to work all the basic skills, and we're just going to cover them under varying conditions. We're going to add some uh, we're going to add some stress in there, some uh, elevated heart rate shooting, uh, shooting at different distances, multiple targets, that kind of thing. Got it. All right, love that. So guys, we've got maintenance. We started off our day with a little bit of maintenance, just zeroing and testing a new optic and gun. Uh, we got the skills piece, and then we got the stress piece. The stress is gonna change based on your context. If you're a competitive shooter, that's one, uh, one set where you're really testing those skills on fire, add some confusion, some running and gunning, some elevated heart rate, a little confusion, that's good. Or if you're a defensive shooter, you're imagining all the different lines of attack where you may get lit up, and you're thinking about the battlefield as a 360. Maybe you've got a nuanced scenario, but it's skills on fire is basically what stress shoots are. So whatever you're tackling, make sure you're purpose driven. Paul's awesome uh, leading us on our range day to make sure that we're really making every round count. Right now, ammo is scarce, but the times are dangerous and seem to be getting worse, which means we've got to stay sharp, you and I, if we hope to be good, loving protectors of others. So don't stop training, just train smarter, right? Also, as an ask, I'm going to include this more and more because it's so important. We've got these Goliaths around us that are anti-free speech, anti-Second Amendment. It's our government. It's our big tech. It's Hollywood. It's the media. And we need some help winning this cultural war. In our fight, what we've done is develop our own streaming service. It's an app which is all backed up on websites as well where we've got entertaining shows. It's shows you'd really like. It's actual like TV shows. Also, our training classes, we're adding more of full training classes of, uh, of ours and also other folks out there, but we definitely need you to join. It's 10 bucks a month and it's gonna help us engage in the culture war. We've also, and this is new, We've brought all kinds of gun tubers over. So we've got Mr. Guns and Gear and Grand Thumb and Kentucky Ballistics and Guns and Gadgets and uh, Military Arms Channel is about to be on there as well. And so we've got all these guys coming over so that if YouTube shuts everything out, we've built an arc where all these guys are welcome. So join us in the fight. We'd really appreciate it. Until then, guys, train hard, train smart, and stay free.